Goodbye Twilight Masquerade, hello Stellar Crown. Another three months has come and gone, meaning it's time for our next major set and all the fun new artists and Pokemon that come with it. To commemorate the occasion, let's see what this sparkling set has to offer by cracking open this here Elite Trainer Box and see what hidden gems await in its depths. Alright, before we get to the packs, let's start things off with this here promo print. I'll admit that Noctowl is kind of a strange choice for the promo spot, but hey, I won't complain too much. Drawn by Obsidian Flames alum Tetsu Kayama, Noctowl is a perfect embodiment of his unique style, mixing mostly rounder shapes and dot shading to make a piece that I can almost feel. The addition of Noctowl's collection of shiny objects at the bottom of the card round this goofy little piece out and give some rationale to its inclusion here as the sort of keeper of all these shinies yet to come. To start our first pack, we got Onishi's Lyleep, Ayakasube's Bombardier, Oswaldo Kato's Electabuzz, Ren's Lechonk, Iwamoto 05's Reshiram, Payapaberry by Studio Bora Inc. Okacheke's Swalot. Ghidorah's Iron Boulder. Taiga Kasai's Salazzle. And Lin's Karakasta. Always a treat to see Pokemon that rarely get printed get more attention, and even more so when they get the justice they deserve, like Onishi gives to Lyleep here. The simple children's book-esque visuals and flat colors air on the goofier side, but that works out perfectly to give this card the charm that it needs. Onishi is a Twilight Masquerade alum whose personal works are even more bizarre than their TCG prints, making me really hopeful that we'll see a full illustration rare from them in the future. The elongated and stylized animals in their pieces are absolutely wild, but give a quaint and oddly nostalgic vibe that I'm admittedly struggling to place, but exists nonetheless. So really just the perfect way to depict one of my favorite fossil Pokemon. In our second pack, we have Marina Chikazawa's Meryl, Kodama's Rhyhorn, Atsushi Furusawa's Ponyta, Jerky's Grubbin, Goto Minori's Veluza, Uninori's Tornadus, Crispin by Ghidorah, Tomomi Ozaki's Pancham, Natsumi Yoshida's Palmy, and Lucario EX by Planeta Igarashi. Seeing Marina Chikazawa finally given a non-trainer card to sink their teeth into sure didn't disappoint. Meryl here works as a simple but effective piece with its minimal line work, diffuse shadows, and calming array of blues and greens, broken up by Meryl's bright red ears and mouth that draw you to the center of the piece. Overall, just a nice refreshing piece from a new name to the TCG that I hope to see more of in the future. Onto our third pack, we find Aspera's Raboot, Amelicart's Mo Rotom, Mina Nakai's Eevee, Soichiro Gunjima's Riolu, Rianti Hidayat's Togedemaru, Kuchie's Marowak, Ryu Diffuse's Frogadier, Grand Tree by Ayumi Odashima, Yukiko Baba's Finian, and Tonji Matsuno's Kling Clang. I will say I'm not a huge fan of when a set uses its card list as a place to dump basic prints that we haven't received in other sets, but look, if that's what it takes to get Mina Nakai's Eevee into my collection, I won't complain. Another set, another Eevee, and another great piece. There is almost a playful sloppiness to it, with colors that bleed beyond the lines and a faint airbrush effect to some of the shadows that extend beyond their own containment, topped off with its array of greens and yellows creating this warm springtime feeling. The result is a charming piece that fits Eevee's lighthearted nature perfectly, even with such a simple pose. Mina Nakai has been working with the TCG since generations back in the XY era, but you wouldn't know it just going off of style. Her earliest prints had a much softer style to them that reminds me a lot of Naya Kimura. Starting with Pancham in Fusion Strike though, she would adopt what I'd argue is her more iconic style that we still see live on on Eevee here. Outside the TCG, her works for other publications air much more on the softer side color-wise, but with that same thick line work we see from her cards. Overall, just a really strong and talented artist that never fails to impress with every new print. 
In pack four, we have Shiburangaru's Varum, Miki Tanaka's Drifloon, Osare's Clink, Yukihiro Tada's Hoot Hoot, Hayao Gonosuke's Double, Yuka Tanaka's Eldegoss, Akira Komayama's Lantern, Kentaro's Mewtwo, a Reverse Hollow Varum, and Kodama's Raging Bolt. There's a pretty strong assortment of artists in the TCG right now that love themselves some nice thick line work, and Yuki Hiratada is no exception. I'm always a sucker for purple and orange sunsets, and Hoot Hoot here gives me just what the doctor ordered. The gradients on the clouds, mountains, and sky provide a gentle feeling to the piece, which complements the thicker line work and simpler shading on the rest of the composition. We've got the whole damn rainbow in this piece, but Tata knows how to blend them together to create a finished product that is more than able to get the job done and not be too in your face about it. Coming to our midpoint here in pack 5, there's Konan Itandi's Score Bunny, Whiskers' Lediba, Karya's Minfu, Yu Nishida's Flittle, Shibi's Electivire, Another Veluza. Another Swalot. A Reverse Hollow Hoot Hoot. A Reverse Hollow Swalot. And Venusaur EX by Saki Hayashiro. Wouldn't be Pokemon if we didn't get some Gen 1 nostalgia lumped in, and Stellar Crown is no exception, giving us the Blastoise EX and Venusaur EX we've been missing out on. Saki Hayashiro puts together a nice little Venusaur here as it bursts out of its confines with a powerful whip attack that is extra nice with the added holofoil pattern on top that the pictures really can't do justice. Next, in pack 6, we got Narumi Sato's Fido, Koriguchi's Charcadet, Minanakai's Clang, Nurakabe's Cyclozar, Tetsukiyama's Slowking, Akaberry by Studio Bora Inc. Nagimisu's Crabominable. Ryu Diffuse's Raidon. Another Crabominable. And Blastoise EX by Planeta Yamashita. One of the best parts of the TCG is the sheer amount of styles and techniques we see every set, and Narumi Sato's Fido is a great example of this. Compositionally, it's a really cute use of this Pokemon, looking just a little confused in a kitchen surrounded by traditional ingredients, a perfect setting for what is honestly a pretty slept on Pokemon design. The texture from the canvas gives an extra layer of depth to the piece and adds the rustic feel that it wouldn't feel out of place in an art museum. Minus the doe dog, of course. On to pack 7, we have Okacheke's Milsery, another Meryl, another Rhyhorn, another Ponyta. Briar by Naoki Saito, another Electivire, another Double, a Reverse Hollow Tornadus, Shimaris Yukichi's Gulpin, and Gosen's Bufalant. I know most will probably be pulling for the Gulpin illustration around this set but I'm content with this lovely piece by Shimurisu Yukichi. The slightly waviness of the line work, the bold white highlights, and the playful saturated colors all play to Yukichi's strengths and bring out another home run print for Gen 3 fans. Yukichi debuted in Temporal Forces with Ekans, but since then has put up a strong roster of standard prints that all have this charming roundness to them. That's not surprising when you take a look at some of their non-Pokemon works. They are an absolute beast at creating strong environment pieces paired with cute chibi characters to create calming yet potent pieces that have all the vibes one could ask for. If we ever see an illustration rare from them, it will surely be one to remember. Almost there, in pack 8, we find Takeshi Nakamura's Duraludon, Nisoto Niso's Joltik, Akira Igawa's Turtonator, Tetsukiyama's Toad School, Shiburangaru's Vikavolt, Dancheo's Rapid Ash, another Veluza, a Reverse Hollow Double, Keichorito's Pangaro, 
and another Raging Bolt. Gotta love it when artists take the stupidest Pokemon and give them the glow up they need. Dereldon is one of those ideas feel works better on paper than in practice, but give the reins to Takeshi Nakamura and he'll get to cooking. While a relatively simple composition, the added texture from Nakamura's hazy colors and subtle ominous lighting give this behemoth the love it desperately needs. Blue-greens intermingle with harsh oranges paired with yellow-greens create a strong effect unlike much else you'll see from the TCG. Debuting in Obsidian Flames, Nakamura's style is usually pretty simple compositionally, but brilliant with how it mixes colors to create these almost ethereal pieces that are just a treat to admire. Surprising no one, Nakamura's personal works have a strong focus on tokusatsu-inspired space imagery, with a healthy helping of more traditionally Japanese pieces and a penchant for the weird which you know that I absolutely eat up. Finishing things off, in pack 9 we get another Pancham, another Duraladon, Subotari's Perugly, Takeshi Shiraishi's Tirtuga, another Veluza, another Briar, another Electivire, Mikikudo's Cradley, Suichiro Gunjima's Chinchou, and another Caracosta. I'll round this out just like we started with another fossil Pokemon done right. The Tier 2 line hasn't gotten any love from the TCG, but that ends today. With art by Temporal Forces alum Takeshi Shiraishi, I finally get to talk about one of my favorite new faces to the TCG. Tier 2 here pairs perfectly with Shiraishi's trademark blues, greens, and yellows to knock out another glorious ocean scene to finally give this turtle some justice. Shiraishi has quickly become one of my favorite new artists in the TCG with their beautiful oil painting prints. Outside of Pokemon, they've painted some absolutely gorgeous landscapes that make you want to explore every corner of the canvas. Absolutely stunning work with an insane attention to detail all around, and I hope to continue seeing them for many sets to come. With that, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and until then, I'm going to go do something more productive elsewhere. Come on, where is it? Ugh. It's around here somewhere. I know I have something. Ugh. Come on. No, it can't be that. Uh, demons, maybe? I don't know. No, that's, that's stupid. Uh, huh. What is it? Come on, think, think, think. Think. Okay, calm down. The answer's gotta be somewhere. No, 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 not, a not again, not again, no. Well, like they say, when in Rome, open more packs. In our bonus pack, we find another Ponyta, Svelte's Cubone, Another Milsery, Yuriko Akase's Glamio, another Vicavolt, Jurasosimo's Diancy, another Slowking, a Reverse Hollow Drifloon, Gravity Gemstone by Toist Beach, and Terrapagos EX by Five Band Graphics. I'm so glad we were able to get our hands on one of these stellar cards because frankly they're just so beautiful. The texturing and rainbow holler pattern really works wonders here, adding an additional sheen to a card that is already bursting with color. The crystal rainbow border is an additional nice touch that really just makes this card one you've got to see for yourself. It's gonna be an absolutely wonderful addition to the collection. With that, we do reach the end of the video. Um, as always, here is a graphic showing our polls for the set. Uh, overall, I don't think Stellar Crown was quite as crazy as Twilight Masquerade was, but still a really fun set. Comment down below your thoughts on the set at large and what some of your favorite cards are from it. If you like what you see and want to see more like it, remember to like and subscribe so you can be notified for the Surging Sparks video when that finally drops. Judging from what we've seen thus far from the Japanese sets, it's looking like it's going to be an absolute banger holiday set to round us out for the year, and you're not going to want to miss that. Anyway, until I see you next time, remember to stay salty.